So today, I know it's a Wednesday, but because tomorrow is World Book Day and we're going to have a bit of an off timetable day, I'm going to do our Samson today, along with a little bit of mental and um, sort of general math skills as well through our mental maths challenge. Oh, I'll just move you over. So today we are going to be looking at our subtraction counting on method again. So uh, just a reminder for Samson, we're using an add and up method to get to the next number. And a few people did find this tricky last week, though lots of you did a really fab job. So I'm really, really impressed with quite a lot of you. So hopefully you'll improve your score of time this week. So let's have a think about what we're doing. For Samson, we are adding on and we start off normally by adding on the units to the next 10. But the numbers this week again are already at a 10, so we don't need to do the first step. We just need to count on from 80 up to 127. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. We could count on tens in our fingers. So we know that there's two tens to get to 90 or to 100, so 90, 100. And then we need to add on two more to get to 120. So 110, 120. So there would be four tens and then I've got my seven units. So that would be 47. Another way to think about it is to count up to 100. So I know that would be 20. And then from 100 to 20, 127 would be 27. So 20 plus 27 would be 47. So that's another way to think about it as well. Let's do a couple more examples. So we've got 196 take away 40. Okay, again, there are a couple of ways to do this. We could just actually take the tens away from this one if you're comfortable doing that. But if you want to use the counting on method, how we would do it, we know that there's six tens up to 100 and then nine more tens to go up to here. So nine and six would make 15 tens plus six units would be plus 156. Let's look at another one. We've got 111 take away 70, so give this one a go. Okay, so let's look at it. We're already at the next 10, so we're just going to start counting on from 70 to 111. So I know that to get up to 100, I need three tens and then 11 more. So three tens is 30, plus 11 more would be plus 41. The other way I could do it is count on the tens from 7 to 11. 8, 9, 10, 11 would be four tens plus my one would be 41. Same answer either way. All right, last one for this week. 135 take away 80, so give this one a go. All right, so we could think about it in a couple of ways. We could count up to 100 and then on with another 35. So we could do 20 up to 100 plus 20 up to 100 and then add our 35. So 20 and 35 would be 55. Other way we could do it is count on from eight tens to 13 tens. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, five tens under five units would make 55. So hopefully this will give you a little bit more of a chance to practice that counting on method for mental, um, subtraction so it enables us to count up rather than having to do the takeaway in our head which is sometimes a little bit easier um there was somebody last week that was doing chimney sums for this and it's great that you can do that but it's really important we learn some mental strategies as well so please give this a go counting on to find how to do a, a mental subtraction sum now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over three parts of maths that you're going to need for your challenge today. There are three challenges, a mild, a medium and a spicy. I've popped them all in the assignment. Please, you do not need to do more than one. I mean, if you want to, you can, but you do not need to do more than one. There are three there. Um, the bits of maths that I'm going over will be helpful to help you do them but all of the topics on there with the exception of Roman numerals which I will talk about you will have done before so it is about applying our math skills in a fun and interesting way and I know you all love doing these mysteries so hopefully you will have a bit of fun doing your maths today 
So in the medium or the mild and the spicy challenge, there is a little bit of negative numbers. Now we have looked at these a little bit before, but I just thought seeing as there's something that's a wee bit unusual, I would remind you of what we do. So you can see here, I have drawn out myself a number line, and this is what I would like you to do in order to help you work out the answers to these questions. You can see like normally when we have a number line, it would start with zero and it would start to go up, but we actually have numbers that are below zero. And the most common way we can think of this is for temperature, or if you owe the bank money, you could say you've like got negative money. Um, but basically, it's just we go from zero and we work backwards. So one, zero, minus one. Okay, so we're counting back and forth. And the reason it's important to draw a number line is when we're counting on, a lot of people forget zero exists, but zero is a really important number. So let's see what that means. So we've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right up to 14. And then we've got minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, right down to minus 14. So if I asked you, for example, what was the difference between minus three and two? Okay, a lot of people would just do three take away two, which would be one, but that's not right. Let's look why. So if we go from minus three to two, that's one, two, three, four, five. So the difference between minus three and two is five. So let's look if we have a sequence how we could do that. So we're starting off with minus 10, then we're going to minus seven, then we're going to minus uh, four, then we're going to minus one. And I want you to tell me what would be next. So when we look at our sequence, we need to find out how much it's changing each time. So let's go to minus 10 and see how many it takes to get to minus seven. So I'm adding on one, two, three. So I would have added three. The number's got three bigger. One, two, three. I've added on three again. One, two, three. I've added on three again. So I know that to get to my next number, I need to add on three to minus one. So let's go on three more up. One, two, three. And my answer would be two. Let's look at that again. One, two, three. My answer to fill in the box would be two because I'm adding on three each time. Now let's have a look at what happens if the sequence goes the other way. So here's an example. So we're going five, then we go to one, then we go to minus three, minus seven, and then I've got my blank that I want to find out. So we can see that we're getting smaller each time going from five to one. So that's take away four. Okay, so let's check that. One, two, three, four. I'm getting four smaller. Let's look at this. We start at one. One, two, three, four. So that would bring me to minus three. I take away four again. Now from minus three to minus seven. One, two, three, four. So I'm taking away four again. So let's take four away one more time. We've got one, two, three, four. So I know my answer would be minus 11. So that's how we use our number line to help work out our negative numbers. So another thing we're going to have a look at, you will have done this before, but we're going to look at some coordinates just to refresh our memory. So I've drawn out a little um, coordinate grid here. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the axes. Now the axes are the two lines along the side with the numbers on them. And they have names, they're called an X axis and a Y axis. So this is our X axis. And this is our y axis. And the way we remember that is we know that y's up. So y goes up, which sounds exactly like the phrase y's up, which I would say if you were being daft, would you ever y's up? So y's up and x is across because x is literally across. So that's how I remember it. Y's up and x is across. So when we're looking at coordinates, we'll see that there's a point and the point will always be on the lines somewhere. So for example, here. So you can see I've put a little point here. Now let's think about how we'd write this down. So when we write down coordinates, there's two numbers to explain where on the grid they are and they are in brackets and separated by a comma. We always, 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 always start with the X first. And X comes first in the alphabet, so that's the way to remember that. So our X, we can go along our X axis and we can see that it's sitting on the number two line. So we would write two and then we would do our Y, so we'd go up and we'd see it's sitting on the number five line. So that point is two, five. 
Now I'm going to write down this coordinate. Okay, I want you to pause the video and try and work out where on the grid that would go. Okay, so we know we start with our X, so it must be somewhere on the four line on this one here. And we know that it's on the number nine on the Y axis. So let's go up on the four until we get to nine on the Y. Whoop. So we can see that it's on the four line here and the nine line here, which would mean it would have to be here. That's where that point would be. So that is how we read and use coordinates. You will have done this before. Remember, it's just to refresh your brain for your math challenge today. So the final thing we're going to quickly talk about is Roman numerals. Now, basically these are in um, the spicy challenge, but there is a wee tiny bit in the medium one as well. And it's not a bad thing to learn about them because they help our understanding of numbers. So this is a really old fashioned way of writing down numbers. Now, because this isn't something that we really technically need to know, I have included a little file on the assignment that will sort of tell you what the Roman numerals mean. But if you wanted to give it a go yourself, this is how we would do it. So Roman numerals is an ancient way of writing down numbers. So I've put sort of the, the main low numbers at the top. So the letter I stands for one, the letter V stands for five, the letter X stands for 10, the letter L stands for 50, and the letter C stands for 100. So if I was to write down, I, 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 like that, how many would that be worth? So that would be worth three because it's one, two, three. But where it gets a bit odd is if we have a bigger number with a smaller number in front of it, it asks us to subtract. So for example, this. So this is a one and this is a five. You would think, hmm, that's six, but no, because the smaller number comes first, we take it away. So it's actually five minus one, which is four. However, if we look at VI, because the bigger number is first, we add the smaller number on. So it would be five plus one, which would be six. So have a think about this one. We've got XL. So the smaller number 10 comes first, then the bigger number 50 comes second. So we know we would take the 10 away, so that would be equal to 40. And then this, what do you think that would be equal to? So that would be equal to 60 because the smaller number comes second, so we add it. Um, so Roman numerals aren't something we really need to learn very well, but they are a good way just to use a bit of code breaking and problem solving skills with our maths and our number work. So if you want to give it a go using this method, then that is absolutely fine. But remember, I have put a little key up there for you um, to help you if you get stuck, if you're, especially if you're attempting the spicy one because there's quite a lot in that one.